Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In this presentation, I'll be using Egypt as a model uh, to show you how a country with a very high prevalence of HCV and limited resource resources can achieve elimination of HCV by the year 2030. In this presentation, I'll give a brief introduction. Then I'll show you the efforts to control HCV infection in Egypt, talking about the past, giving you an idea of what we are doing in the present, and the forecast for 2030. In the Emro region and Afro region, the prevalence of HCV is in the intermediate or high side of the prevalence, and countries like Egypt have high prevalence of HCV. If we see the countries responsible for the 80% of the global HCV infections uh, worldwide, you will see that Pakistan ranks number two and Egypt ranks number three in the contribution to the global infections with HCV. These are the data from the demographic and health surveys of the Egyptian Ministry of Health. In 2008, the prevalence of HCV antibody was 14.7%. It dropped to 10% in 2015. The prevalence of HCV viremia was 9.8% and dropped to 7% in 2015. So what were we doing in the past? Before 2006, only patients, HCV, chronic HCV patients who can afford to pay for the treatment were treated for HCV. Starting 2006, a national program set in to treat the HCV patients, and 26 specialized treatment centers were constructed all over Egypt. 360,000 chronic HCV patients were treated with pegylated interferon and ribavirin for 48 weeks during the period 2006 to 2014. The SVR was around 50%. The cost of treatment uh, per patient was $2,000, and the annual budget allocated by the government for the treatment of HCV was around $90 million. Currently, we have many options. We have the new DEAs, many options for treatment of HCV. The SVR is around 90 to 100 percent, but the problem is the price. The Egyptian government has successfully negotiated prices for the DEAs, like Sophos Bouvier, for example, 1% of the market uh, price worldwide. This was a great achievement that enabled the Egyptian government to introduce Sophos Bouvier in the market in 2014. And these are the treatment protocols implemented by the national program in Egypt. During the period 2007 to 2014, the implemented protocol for HCV treatment was pegylated interferon plus ribavirin. Patients F0 to F3 were treated. With the introduction of Sophos Bouvier in 2014, and starting 2014, October 2014 to May 2015, the treatment protocols were soft plus pegylated interferon plus ribavirin for cirrhotic patients who were interferon eligible and soft ribavirin for 24 weeks for cirrhotic patients who were interferon ineligible and up to child Q8, B8. In May 2015, Simipriver was introduced to Egypt and the treatment protocols changed to soft plus pegylated interferon plus ribavirin for F0 to F4 interferon eligible patients up to child A6 and soft plus semiprever for F0 to F4 patients who are interferon ineligible up to child A6. In January 2016, the clatasvir was introduced to Egypt, and the treatment regimens for the patients with chronic HCV in Egypt became interferon-free regimens. So all patients 
are now being treated with SOF plus Daclatasvir. All patients are treated, whether F0 or F1, F2 or F4, and cirrhotic patients up to child B7 are being treated currently. So the current treatment in Egypt is SOF plus Daclatasvir for all HCV patients. In order to deal with the increasing numbers of patients being treated, the national program has scaled the efforts for uh, treating patients. For the EA, DEAs, there are negotiations even reducing the prices further. There is fast-track registration for any new uh, DEA. The government encourages the local production of generics. The treatment centers have been increased from 26 centers to 51 centers all over Egypt and will increase further to 100 centers by 2017. An additional 2,000 healthcare workers have been trained to uh, tackle the treatment of HCV patients and capacity building for data management in these centers. The number of cases treated annually have increased from 65,000 to 200,000 patients. This should increase to about 400,000 annually by 2017. And currently a screening program is now being developed in order to screen patients for HCV infection in order to provide the program with enough patients to treat. These are the data from the nation, national program updated January 2016. The number of registered patients for treatment are almost 1.3 million patients. Only 40% of the patients attended the first visit. And now, 205,000 patients have already started a treatment for HCV in this program. Who is paying for the treatment? About 92% are treated for free. They do not pay for the treatment. The government sponsors the treatment in 83% of the patients. The health insurance system sponsors 9% and only 8% of the patients will pay for the treatment. These are the treatment protocols implemented. The interferon, uh, about 41,000 patients received interferon soft plus ribavirin. 24,000 patients received soft plus ribavirin. 42,000 patients received soft plus semiprevair. 50,000 patients received SOF plus Daclatasvir and 46,000 patients received SOF plus Daclatasvir plus uh, ribavirin. These are the real-life results or data for 16,871 patients or SV, whose SVRs are available. Out of these patients, 51% received triple therapy, pegylated interferon ribavirin and sofosbuvir. 33% received SOF plus ribavirin, 16% received SOF plus simbiprevair. These are the SVR results of the triple therapy, SOF plus pegylated interferon and ribavirin for 12 weeks. The SVR was 93%. For the dual therapy, a therapy using sofosbuvir plus ribavirin for 24 weeks, the SVR was 77%. This SVR is relatively low because all of these patients were patients with advanced fibrosis. Because when we started the program, only cirrhotic patients were treated. And all the patients who were treated with SOF plus ribavirin were the patients who were, were interferon ineligible. So these were patients who had advanced fibrosis. So the SVR in these patients was 77%. For the SOF plus semiprevair for 12 weeks, the SVR data are 95%. Uh, 
So what's our forecast in Egypt for 2030? What I'm going to show now is a mathematical model with three scenarios. The first scenario, the base case scenario, if we're going to continue treating patients with pegylated interferon plus ribavirin, and we are going to continue treating only 65,000 patients per year, what we were doing in the past. So we have patients with 50% SVRs, and we are treating 65,000 annually. The second scenario is increasing treatment. We are going to efficacy. We are going to use the DAAs with a 90% SVR, but still treat the same number of patients where we were treating the 65,000. And the third scenario, the scenario number two, is the best scenario, increasing the efficacy of treatment using the DEAs, increasing the diagnosis and treatment. We are going to treat 325,000 patients by 2018 per year, of course, and reducing the new uh, infections. Actually, what we are doing now in Egypt is the scenario number uh, two. So these are the assumptions. In 2014, both SVR and medical eligibility rates increased to 90%. We are going to treat patients 15 to 74 years with fibrosis score of F0 or more. And the annual number of treated patients will increase to 105,000 in 2015, 260,000 in uh, 2016, uh, 325,000 in 2018, and then continue treating through 325,000 per year till 2030. This, of course, has to be coupled with increasing the diagnosis of cases from 125,000 per year to 338,000 per year, and decreasing the new infections by 20% per year. If we can achieve this, then we can achieve the second uh, scenario. And if we can achieve the second scenario, we are going to get, by 2030, a 95% drop in the total number of infected patients, an 88% drop in the number of patients with compensated cirrhosis, an 87% drop in the number of patients with decompensated cirrhosis, an 85% drop in the number of patients with HCC, and a 77% drop in the HCV-related mortality. Adopting the second scenario will result in 4 million fewer viremic individuals in 2030 versus the base case. This is a 95% reduction. By 2025, the, vir the viremic prevalence drops to 2%. By 2030, the viremic prevalence is estimated at 0.4%. Between 2013 and 2030, there were uh, 1,770,000 new infections will be avoided. 240,000 HCV-related mortalities will be uh, prevented. This will be feasible if DAs are available at an affordable price to be able to treat the necessary uh, numbers, increasing the diagnosis of new cases and preventing uh, new uh, infection. Don't forget that we have to couple the treatment with preventing transmission. If we don't do this coupling, we are going to get only a 79% drop in the total number of cases infected with HCV, but if we couple treatment with prevention of infection, we're going to get a 95% drop in the total number of infected cases by 2030. Does this have an impact on the cost? Yes, it does. There will be a substantial drop in the total cost, whether direct or indirect, for HCV infection starting the year 2023. So these are the challenges 
in accomplishing this plan, the introduction of newer treatments is usually slow. You have to negotiate affordable prices. You have to convince the governments to pay for treatment. You have to overcome the administrative constraints. You need fast-track registration. In Egypt, we have already accomplished these. We have already uh, overcome these challenges. You have challenges in diagnosis. The number of diagnosed individuals needs to be increased considerably to match the projected increase in treatment. The strategy should emphasize efforts to increase awareness and testing for HCV. You have to prevent stigmatization. You have to do efforts in prevention. In addition to the effect of treatment, active pre prevention is necessary, especially in health care settings. Punitive legislation for disease transmission is mandatory. So to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, can DAAs decrease the prevalence, morbidity, and mortality of HCV in the next 10 to 15 years? Yes, it is possible through a well-organized treatment program supported by governments and NGOs, affordable DAAs with an SVR more than 90%, increased diagnosis and treatment, and reduction of new uh, cases. In Egypt, we have already embarked on this plan we have already succeeded in 2015 in exceeding our expectations and treating 180,000 patients in 2015. And I guess any country like Egypt with a high prevalence and limited resources can do the same and reach elimination by 2030. Thank you very much.